Now, earlier today, the president tweeted such respect for the people of Iran as they try to take back their corrupt government. Now, you will see great support from the United States at the appropriate time. I don't know many, many revolutions that win, win with slingshots and baseball bats if people aren't armed, Ambassador. My fear is we will wake up to a massacre of a lot of these young students. That is a fear that I believe is quite legitimate, sadly. You know, honestly, the people who know best what they need are the opposition figures inside Iran. If they're content to take American and other outside support, I think we should provide it to them. The Zionist Organization of America, backed by Sheldon Adelson, pressured Trump to fire National Security Advisor H.R. McMaster because he was not pro-Israel enough. ZOA National President Morton Klein said, We are deeply concerned about General McMaster's actions in his role as the Trump administration's top national security advisor. He kvetches about McMaster not putting Israeli interests ahead of American interests, then says, the ZOA strongly recommends that General McMaster be reassigned to a different role in this administration, unrelated to these critical issues. McMaster's job is to protect the national security of the United States, not to protect the national security of Israel. Remember, Trump is being financed by Israeli billionaire Sheldon Adelson, who said that Trump would be the best president for Israel ever. So what does Trump do about McMaster? He forces McMaster to resign. Imagine losing your job as the top national security advisor because you didn't support a foreign country enough. What's even worse is that Trump replaced the three-star general with pro-Israel chicken hawk John Bolton. Who is John Bolton? Well, Foreign Policy magazine describes John Bolton as a threat to US national security. He was one of the architects of the Iraq war. He lied about Iraq having weapons of mass destruction, lied about the Iraqi government being connected to Al-Qaeda. These lies cost the taxpayer trillions of dollars. These lies led to thousands of American soldiers dead and hundreds of thousands wounded, not to mention a million dead Iraqis. Despite all this, John Bolton said he has no regrets on the Iraq war. If that's not bad enough, he's pushing to preemptively bomb Iran and he's using the same lies that he did for Iraq. Iran is the central banker of uh, international terrorism, and I hope it's not going to take uh, another 9-11 to wake us up. We're fighting a forward strategy to prevent another 9-11 from happening over here. We don't want to have another 9-11. 9-11 with weapons of mass destruction. Former CIA officer Philip Giraldi writes that John Bolton's appointment means another war for Israel is coming. The Jewish Policy Center even calls the United States military a Zionist institution. Why is that? Well, most of the neoconservatives who control U.S. foreign policy are in fact Jewish. This is even admitted in the Israeli media. George Tenet director of the CIA during 9-11 and the invasion of Iraq, referred to the neocons as Jews while he was drunk in Saudi ambassador Bandar Bush's pool. He said, They're setting me up. The bastards are setting me up. But I am not going to take the hit. According to one witness, he mocked the neoconservatives in the Bush administration and their alignment with the right wing of Israel's political establishment, referring to them with exasperation as the Jews. It looks like John Bolton is one of the few neocons who aren't Jewish, but he is just as pro-Israel as they are, if not more. He received the Guardian of Zion Award in 2017. While most of the world is concerned about John Bolton's appointment, the psychopaths in Israel love this. Justice Minister Ayelet Shaked posted on Twitter that President Trump continues to appoint true friends of Israel to senior positions. John Bolton is one of the most outstanding. Ayala Shaked is a Jewish supremacist who used Facebook to call for the genocide of Palestinians. Also praising John Bolton's appointment is Jewish serial killer Naftali Bennett. He told the Israeli media that Israel will target civilians in the next war with Lebanon. 
He claims that Israel lost the 2006 war to Hezbollah only because Bush's Secretary of State asked them to fight morally and not to target civilian infrastructure. Bennett believes this should be Israel's official stance. The Lebanese institutions, its infrastructure, airport, power stations, traffic junctions, Lebanese army bases, they should all be legitimate targets if a war breaks out. Just to show you how psychotic their country is, this is the education minister saying that Israel will target civilians. Just like they targeted civilians in Gaza with white phosphorus. 1500 degrees Fahrenheit, burning children alive. That's a real holocaust. That isn't the only time Israel targeted civilians. The UN had a resolution in place to end the 2006 war between Israel and Lebanon. Israel was not happy about having to walk out with their tail between their legs. So before they left, they dropped more than a million cluster bombs. The head of an IDF rocket unit said, What we did was insane and monstrous. We covered entire towns in cluster bombs. If you don't know what cluster bombs are, a lot of them don't explode when they land. So if you're going for a walk or your kids are playing outside, someone's losing a leg. More than 98% of known cluster bomb victims are civilians, and 40% are children. The war was over. There's no reason to do this unless you thoroughly enjoy slaughtering children. Chabad rabbi Manus Friedman was asked by Moment magazine, how should Jews treat their Arab neighbors? He responded, destroy their holy sites, kill men, women, children, and cattle. He also said, I don't believe in Western morality i.e. don't kill civilians or children. They keep telling us to remember their suffering, but then they don't even want to abide by Western morals. Trump, the savior, has already sent troops to Israel to help them in an upcoming war with Lebanon. General Richard Clark has recently stated that Americans are prepared to die for Israel. Washington and Israel have signed an agreement which would see the U.S. come to assist Israel with missile defense in times of war. And according to Haimovich, I'm sure once the order comes, we will find here U.S. troops on the ground to be part of our deployment and team to defend the state of Israel. And those troops who would be deployed to Israel are prepared to die for the Jewish state, Clark said. We are ready to commit to the defense of Israel, and anytime we get involved in a kinetic fight, there is always the risk that there will be casualties. But we accept that. As every conflict we train for and enter, there is always that possibility. Lobbying is legal bribing. Sheldon Adelson is starting a new Israeli lobby, which will be a hardline alternative to AIPAC. He wants to pay politicians to always, without question, support Israel. There will be no political correctness. There will be no questions about whether we should keep the door to the White House open to us. There will be no partisanship. If something is endangering the state of Israel, you will fight for Israel. Basically, Adelson believes that American politicians aren't kissing Israel's ass enough. He wants them to be more like Mike Pence. Before Trump made Pence as vice president, Pence was saying that the United States shouldn't be an honest broker in the Middle East, and that it should do whatever Israel wants. It, it feels for all the world that we are sliding back to the era of the Clinton administration where it was the ambition of the United States to be an honest broker in the region. Well, I, I take issue with that. I think President George W. Bush um, uh, got it right. Uh, the United States uh, certainly wants to be honest, but we don't want to be a broker. A broker doesn't take sides. <laughs> a broker negotiates between uh, parties of equals. But America's on the side of Israel. and and. Uh, to send any other message uh, than our unwavering support uh, that we will stand with what the sovereign government and the people of Israel decide is in their interest. Sheldon Adelson is a Jewish terrorist who wants the United States to drop an atomic bomb on Iran. Iran has not invaded another country in over 200 years. This is even admitted by the Israeli media, Prison Planet. In the mainstream media, we hear a lot about interfering in elections. This genocidal maniac has been trying to buy the presidency for a long time. In the 2012 elections, he financed Newt Gingrich. 
Gingrich vowed to replace the Iranian regime. Now he's financing Trump, and Trump is pushing for regime change in Iran. Hiring John Bolton is one of the final steps. This jackass has already tried to start a war with Iran. Former Israeli Defense Minister Shal Mufaz said, I know John Bolton from when he was the US ambassador to the UN. He tried to convince me that Israel needs to attack Iran. Bolton knows that if Israel attacks Iran, the United States will not stand by and let Israel fight alone. Major General Yer Golan has even admitted that Israel needs the United States to fight Iran. We cannot fight Iran alone, he says. If you can't fight Iran alone, then why the fuck are you trying to start a war with them? While Obama was president, a US official actually called Bibi a chicken shit prime minister. I would like to hear your characterization of how you think relations are now between the United States and Israel. As you well know, uh, an administration official told the Atlantic that you were a chicken expletive. Why should Americans care about this latest controversy? Because it's not a distraction. It's uh, central to the fight of this generation and the next generation. This is our war. Israel's war is our war. They throw gasoline on the fire and they, they side with everybody else who really is using the United Nations to execute a form of veiled anti-Semitism. Anti-Semite, anti-Semite. Prior to the Islamic Revolution in 1979, Israel got 60 to 90 percent of its oil from Iran. Israel was almost completely dependent on Iran for its energy needs. This is revealed in Israeli billionaire Mark Rich's biography, The King of Oil. If there's regime change in Iran, all that oil starts flowing to Israel again. What happened after regime change in Iraq? Israel now gets 77% of its oil from Iraq. So Israel gets the oil, Americans who fight these wars get more debt. They were manipulating America to attack Iran. Now look, Israel's used us like a whore over there. U.S. Colonel Lawrence Wilkerson, who served 31 years in the military, says that Israel is dragging the United States into World War III. The Israeli police want to indict Bibi on corruption charges, and Bibi may be out of office sooner with the chance of early elections. He has been pushing for war with Iran since 1979. He's a psychopath, and he wants to finish what he started. But I have to tell you, I, I, I'm elected by Jews. How many Jews do you have in your district? Uh, seven. But congressmen aren't elected by voters, they're elected by contributors. And mine are in, well, New York, Florida, Hollywood, because I'm one of Israel's guys on the Hill. And I don't know how they're gonna feel about me taking up the cause of Muslims. Here's a great way to explain the political system in the United States. 237 congressmen signed the Israel Anti-Boycott Act, choosing to violate the First Amendment and making it illegal to boycott Israel, a foreign country. Imagine if a majority of Congress chose to violate the First Amendment and make it illegal to boycott China. Russia today was forced to register as a foreign agent in the United States, and rightfully so. But APAC, which actually bribes lawmakers, will not register as a foreign agent. The Justice Department will enforce this for Russia, but not for Israel. In 2015, Bibi got 26 standing ovations from Congress. Rand Paul was clapping, but just not enthusiastically enough. And look, I don't support Rand Paul, but imagine being attacked because you didn't grovel to a foreign leader enough. Neocon websites like the National Review try to defame him for this, and others have as well. Let's take a look at the tweets. Unenthused Rand Paul lifelessly applauds Bibi. Oops. Almost like he has been faking his support for Israel until now. Check out Rand Paul's expressions and reactions to Netanyahu's speech. GF clap, bland, lame. Don't want this guy for prez. No respect. Did anyone else see the look of hatred for Netanyahu on Rand Paul's face? That's why I will never support Paul. His hate is as Horus. Rand Paul is not standing for Netanyahu. I do not think I will be standing for Rand now either. 
and someone responded? He's literally standing and applauding. What do you want him to do? Get on his knees and suck BB's dick live on C-SPAN? When politicians in the United States want to become president, they engage in an ass-kissing contest for Israel. Not a president who says he's neutral on Monday, pro-Israel on Tuesday, and who knows what on Wednesday, because everything's negotiable. When I become president, the days of treating Israel like a second-class citizen will end on day one. The United States has given Israel over a quarter of a trillion dollars in aid. All of that is illegal because Israel has not signed the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty. Most of that $250 billion is military aid so Israel can colonize Palestine. Meanwhile, Israeli Prime Minister Bibi Netanyahu is trying to force gun control on Americans. He writes this in his own book called Fighting Terrorism. There is no greater slap in the face than this. Israel is clearly exploiting the United States. It is not an ally, it is a parasite. I don't understand how any person in their right mind can deny this. Allow due process so that no one's rights are trampled, but, but the ability to go to court, obtain an order, and then collect not only the firearms, but any, any weapons in the position or of that individual. Or might take the firearms first and then go to court. Israel rejected the largest U.S. aid offer in history. They wanted $50 billion of welfare, but Obama would only sign over $38 billion. Now that he's out of office, Senator Lindsey Graham and others are calling for more money to be signed over to Israel. It's a safe bet that we'll see a lot more money signed over in the future. A Jew in Israel was arrested for making bomb threats to Jewish centers in the United States. Then, lawmakers owned by the Israeli lobby pushed for giving $50 million of taxpayer money to Jewish centers for security. And they actually got it, plus more. Congress signed over $60 million for security grants. And that's not all. Americans are now paying Holocaust reparations to Jews. Germany already gives Jews billions of dollars a year. They don't need any more money. They're taking all that they can. Jewish groups grab huge share of grants. Jewish institutions throughout the United States will receive $9.7 million in federal anti-terrorism grants this year, out of a total of $10 million allocated to not-for-profit institutions by the Department of Homeland Security. Tax credit programs are among the growing number of ways that private Jewish day schools and yeshivas nationwide are corralling hundreds of millions of dollars of taxpayer money annually. Meanwhile, rabbis arrested for stealing $12 million from a school for disabled kids. Rabbis arrested for scamming welfare for millions of dollars. Rabbis arrested for scamming Medicaid for millions of dollars. Rabbis arrested for organ trafficking. Elected officials were also arrested for being on their payroll. This is Jewish organized crime. This is the way I look at it. I grew up in northern New Jersey. I grew up in politicians' homes. And I know that to be a politician in New Jersey, somewhere along the line, you got to take an envelope. <laughs> and when you're running for president, it's pretty tough to take an envelope and people not to fucking raise their hand. Mm -hmm. It's like Donald Trump when he raised his hand. I cannot believe it. Yeah. Just on what he did in New York in the 80s. The people handing out the envelopes are Jews. They want someone like Trump in office who will do whatever they want because they have dirt on him. Trump used his power as president to release Chabad Lubavitch rabbi Shalom Rubashkin from prison. Russian Jewish mobster Felix Sater, Chabad Lubavitch Port Washington Man of the Year, was senior advisor to Donald Trump. He's now being investigated for money laundering in Trump's Soho. Trump's father donated bigly to Jewish Israeli causes.
Trump and his father have always been in bed with the Jewish mob in New York and New Jersey. Trump made his fortune working with the Jews in real estate. Jews own most of the real estate in New York. Why would he turn on them? So he can be the savior that some of these idiots on the right make him out to be? All of Trump's children are either married to or dating Jews. That's not a coincidence. He's telling his kids to marry into the tribe. Running against Donald Trump at this point is really treason to your heritage. Cambridge Analytica admitted that they ran Trump's digital campaign. They are responsible for not all, but a lot of the disinformation out there regarding Trump. They collected data from over 50 million Facebook users. They know people don't trust the mainstream media, so they push the phony narrative that Trump is against the mainstream media and deep state. This is all theater. Trump was in fact financed by George Soros. He has even partied with him. His son-in-law, Jared Kushner, is still being financed by George Soros and still parties with him. George Soros was financing Femin, which attacks Muslims and Christians. They wanted to attack Israel, but then Soros cut off their funding. Trump owed money to 72 banks. That's a hell of a lot of Jews. He was bailed out by Rothschild Inc. He put Wilbur Ross, senior managing director of Rothschild, into government. Larry Silverstein received the 2001 Fred C. Trump Award for Lifetime Achievement, which the award was presented by Donald Trump, who stated, Honoring Larry this evening after the tragic September 11 event places great significance to the Trump family and the entire real estate industry. Larry is a very special, talented gentleman. He has a wonderful family and we are honored to recognize your rare and special achievements. Trump awarded 9-11 architect Larry Silverstein. Bibi would call Larry Silverstein every Sunday afternoon. That's how close they were. Trump's father has been friends with Bibi since the 80s. Sheldon Adelson, who's financing Trump, is also financing Bibi. Jared Kushner's father, Charles, also financed Bibi. Bibi used to sleep on Jared Kushner's bed, for God's sake. The Trump train is in Israel. He was dog whistling to you idiots this whole time. This Jewish Mafia has completed its takeover of the United States. The highest levels of the Marine Corps and the Army in those special operations levels, the, the individuals are actually in the mob. New Jersey. You're talking about the Mafia type mob? I'm talking about the Brooklyn, New Jersey mob. My husband, Al Gray, Sheehan, they're all Brooklyn, Cap, Cap Weinberger, um, the Heinz Kissinger, there's the Boston mob which was shipping weapons back and forth to Northern Ireland. Um, and I don't want to get too deeply involved in that, but it goes, Israel, some of the, the Zionists who came over from Germany, according to my husband, were, um, see he works with those people. The they do a lot of money laundering in, in the banks, cash transactions for the drugs that they're bringing over. You know, what? there's no more. They're not Americans. They're not Christians. They're, they're uh, German existentialists. Now, what are they doing running our nation? I just, uh, it's, it's kind of, they have more affinity for the, the state of Israel right now than they do our nation. I went into the State Department um, Near East section and found there was not one single Palestinian, not one single um, Muslim, religious, uh, Saudi, you know, Jordanian, not one Christian Protestant. Not one Roman Catholic, not one plain old American, whatever, from Corn Pump. Every single person in all of those offices were 
either Zionist, Israelis, whatever, and they had pictures all over the wall of Israel, Israel, Israel. They had magazines, Israel Today. You know, I was given a copy of one. Um, and there were yarmulkes. Dormir